man. The injury bug continues to bite the Celtics as Jared Sellinger goes down with a torn hamstring. He will be out six to eight weeks. That is a huge blow. He's one of the building blocks for this team, and that's really hopefully will not stunt this development. And it, I think it's going to stunt the development of this of this core, so to say. As you can see, Eric Bledsoe. Uh, saying we don't need to bring anyone in. I didn't plan out in the first place, but I'll tell Eric Bledsoe. Sure, why not? And we got some new owner goals here from owner Bernard Patton. Uh, you can see them up on the screen right now. I actually can't really read them. My preview screen's a little small, but nonetheless, um, you know, I'm a little bit afraid that the Jared Sellinger injury is going to affect the uh, development of the core a little bit, especially with Bradley being out earlier in the year. And I want kind of our starting five to get used to playing with each other. And even if I, if what I've talked about before, if, you know, upgrading over Omer Sheik in the future, even if I do do that, it's good to kind of get used to the group playing with a big defensive center because if I do upgrade Omer Sheik, it's going to be for. Just a rich man's version of Omer Sheik, like a Marcus Gasol or Roy Hibbert or something like that. Maybe even a Joakim Noah, just to throw a couple names out there. So it's really important to kind of have the group develop as, uh, you know, playing with the style that I wanted to play with in the future. And, you know, this isn't really the year for us to contend by any means. I don't expect us to be making the conference finals or anything like that. So it's important to kind of get the guys playing well together and kind of building for this future goal we have of winning a championship at some point in the next couple of years. And I think that, you know, an injury like missing Jared Sollinger for two months of the season is, uh, that's a big blow to the development of the core. And, you know, maybe not so much in, in a 2K game, but, you know, I like to think this is, uh, I'd like to think of this as a realistic association or my jam or whatever, but we're going to meet the Cleveland Cavaliers in this ball game. And you can see Eric Bledsoe again, things started looking for the screen from Vitor Favrani, who's starting at the power forward position. I was interested to see how he would play next to Omer Sheik. And I'll talk about uh, one thing in a sec, but I have to point out this Kyrie Irving injury. He comes down awkwardly on his knee, and that looked bad. He is down and out for the count. That actually goes out of bounds. Almost a turnover right there. Good play by Danny Granger. It was the starting small forward for the Cavaliers, but Kyrie Irving, bad knee injury right there. He is going to be out for the game. Turns out he would only have a strained knee, which is good because that looked really bad when he came down awkwardly on that knee. But he will be out for the game, so you're going to get to see a lot of Ramon Sessions, a lot of Tony Douglas who were the uh, backup point guards for this Cavs team. But nonetheless, this is an interesting Cavs team. Uh, they do have Danny Granger on the team, so kind of replace him, or replace Luol Deng with him, and you, it's a very similar team to what they have in real life. Um, Andrew Bynum is still there, and Bynum is a very good player in 2K. He's like at upper 80s in the overall. He has good knees in this game. Um, so it's an interesting team. Anthony Bennett's really effective in this game as well. They do not have Tristan Thompson, and Tristan Thompson's a player that in 2K usually develops into a pretty nice player, so... Looks like they're going to lose out on that, but Anthony Bennett's on this team, and he's pretty impressive for them, at least in this game. But Andrea Bargnani for threes, you see we're down 11 early on right here. But nonetheless, um, the one blessing in disguise of sorts with the Jared Sellinger injuries, it probably gives us time with the Vitor Favorani situation. I've talked about it before, he was kind of disgruntled coming off the bench for us. And this kind of gives us six to eight weeks to let him start, probably get his morale back up a little bit, and just kind of search for the right trade off or if we decide to deal him or see if we can kind of convince him to just... Be our sixth man, be our third big man, be whatever, and uh, just see, you know, if we can kind of turn that around or turn turn him in the right direction. We'll see what we can do, but uh, it could be a bit of a blessing in disguise. Nonetheless, Torrey Murray finds Marshawn Brooks there for the long two, and Marshawn Brooks is a player that was recently traded in a three-way trade. This trade actually happened yesterday. Uh, if this video goes up on Thursday, it'll happen Wednesday. Jordan Crawford and Marshawn Brooks went to the Warriors in a three-way trade that sent the Celtics back Joel Anthony and then a future first round and a future second round pick. Now, a future first round pick's not a definite first round pick. There's a, a weird protection towards it, but nonetheless, I'm not really going to spend time to talk about the trade. I'll save that for Twitter or whatever, but there's Danny Granger for three. Danny Granger really heating up in this game. He was uh, he's providing them with some good three-point shooting and really kind of gave me the idea of kind of this is what they had in mind with Luol Deng. Luol Deng is not a very good offensive player. He's an okay one. He's not a great three-point shooter. He has an okay handle, can kind of finish at the rim, but um, I feel like a Danny Granger type player might have fit in a little bit better in the system. Now, Danny Granger is kind of a shell of what he was a couple years ago, but the Danny Granger they had in this game, I think they would love to have is Danny Granger is going to put on a nice performance for the Cavs, but a nice post move right there from Omer Sheik. And now here's Anthony Bennett. This was a weird lineup that we had in because what well, was really weird for on our part, it was weird on their part. They had Anthony Bennett running at center, which gave us this weird mismatch with a Sheik being covered by Bennett, but then vice versa on the other, and Bennett was able to take advantage of a Sheik covering him. So it was a little bit of a weird lineup, and I didn't really try to counteract it. I just decided to play it as it is. But Ramon Sessions for three. Sessions, not a great three-point shooter in real life, but he was draining some shots in this game. Here's Jabari for three, trying to answer back, and he knocks that one down. The lead is back down to seven, with just 1.14 to play in the second quarter. Now Bargnani kicks to Torrey Murray for three. Murray is no good, but rebounded by Marshawn. Oh, that's Jamal Franklin actually back out to, to Torrey Murray. 
Murray knocks down the three. We get the lead back down to four, but it's up to six. And that's going to be the lead heading into halftime. No halftime interview once again. I don't know what it was, but there's actually going to be a post-game interview. But yeah, I haven't been getting as many interviews as I used to. I imagine it's just because uh, playing the Nuggets last game and then the Cavs this game, I guess, especially with Kyrie Irving hurt, they probably don't have a lot of voice audio for some of the players in this game. If you think about it's a team with Tony Douglas getting big minutes, so it's probably not a team with a lot of uh, big-name players that have their voices in 2K. But Danny Granger and one to the hoop. Great left-handed finish right there. But here's Jabari Parker. Danny Granger is not a great defender. We were trying to take advantage of that with Jabari. He gets his own rebound and then flips that one back up and in. So it's down to a seven-point lead right here. Bledsoe with the ball. Looking for Jabari, coming off ball, pulls up for two, or he didn't really pull up there, he gets caught off the pass, but knocks it down, and it's a six-point game. But Bennett being covered by Vitor Favarani, fading over him, Anthony Bennett in this game. He was torching me, and it was just very surprising, just because, I mean, I understand that in the 2K, I used the rosters from, like, the beginning of the game, and Bennett hadn't yet become his, like, full, you know, NBA bust self or whatever that a lot of people are thinking of him as, but, um... Anyway, I, I'm not willing to give up on Anthony Bennett just yet. I know a lot of people are willing to. Um, it's 40 games into his NBA career, and I would not um, I would not give up on him quite yet. But I also think it's important to take into consideration the fact that look at this draft class in general, and it's not like Anthony Bennett's been horrible compared to some of the other guys taken in the top 10. So, you know, nonetheless, Danny Granger here trying to drive by our man, kicks it out to Ramon Sessions in the corner for three. And that is going to put them back or put them up by 16 at this point as the Cavs are going to blow this game open. Deion Waiters with the ball, giving it to Session. Session is going to get right by Eric Bledsoe, and he's going to put that one in. So it's an 18-point lead. Last second three-pointer is no good, and the Cavs have blown this game open in the third quarter. It is 86-68 to heading into the fourth and final quarter. We'll just have to make some sort of a run. Heading into this fourth quarter, my kind of thinking was, well... I don't know, maybe I can just hold them under or, unto, under 100. You know, I've always talk, kind of talked about that 100-point barrier is the margin I want to keep my opponent under. So maybe we can just hold them under under 100 and try to make a run of sorts here. So we'll see what we can do. Olenek with the ball, posting up Anthony Bennett. will flip that hook shot up, and it will be no good, but he gets his own rebound. And nice contact with there. Kelly Olenek is not a strong player, but he's a great finisher around the rim. And I feel like as he progresses in his NBA career, if he can develop some strength, he can really become a solid finisher. But there's Sergei Kar Karasev. I know I pronounced his, wrong, his name wrong like the entire episode last time. But Karasev putting that one in for two. And then Olenek, nice move right there. Bumping Andrew Bynum, taking the contact and using it to put that in for two. Jamal Franklin for three. It's good. And just like that, it's down to an 11-point lead. And here come the Celtics. That's a nice steal right there from Eric Bledsoe. As he gets the kick out, he's going to take this one to the hoop and slam it down. And one. The lead is down to nine. Now it's down to eight after the and one. 93-85. Bradley with the ball dribbling across court finds a Linux for two and the Linux knocks it down It's down to six so all of a sudden the Celtics are coming back in this ball game down to four right here Deion Waiters driving in he's gonna kick this one to Anthony Bennett baseline mid-range he gets it to go 95-89 Cavs trying to hold on for deal life right now but Bledsoe to the hoop kind of posterized Andrew Bynum right there He didn't really get the dunk off cleanly so I don't know if I'd call that a, a, a fathead as my man Bud would like to say but nonetheless Jabari Parker driving in reverse layup, and it's down to two. The Celtics, and here's what I said, keep them under 100, right? Well, if we can keep them under 100, I think we can win this game. But, oh, my goodness, weird defense right there. We tried to switch on and, you know, left uh, their big guy wide open under the rim. So it's a four-point game. Parker to the hoop. Jabari Parker, look at him just toying with that Cleveland defense right there. Beautiful move. we got to get a defensive stop right here. Deion Waiters, his pass is stolen by Avery Bradley. A huge play. We're going to... Bring this one up the court with Jabari Parker. Kick it to Eric Bledsoe for two. No good. Rebounded by Favarani. Pump fake. We're going to kick this one back out. Parker with the ball. He's going to isolate himself. He's got Danny Granger on him. He's been taking advantage of that matchup all game long. No reason to go away from it now. But first, we're going to call timeout. I tried to push quickly there and get it to Eric Bledsoe for the open two, which he had made that baseline shot a couple times this game. So I was thinking he can knock it down right there, but no good. So we're going to inbound this ball with 8.3 left. Jabari Parker isolated on the right side. Gets to the hoop. Puts it up. He's going to draw the foul, a chance to go to the line and make this a two-point, or make, tie this game, excuse me. First one's up, it's good, so it's down to a one-point game. Jabari with one free throw left to tie this game in Cleveland. It's up, and it is good. We knock it down, 5.5 left to play. Cavs would call timeout. Do we leave them too much time? We're going to find out right here. Anthony Bennett looking to inbound this one. He's going to get this one in to Deion Waiters. who drives to the hoop. He's going to end up kicking this one out. Anthony Bennett, it's good. It <laughs> Anthony Bennett of all people you have got to be kidding me Anthony Bennett knocks it down We get a quick lean to blood cell, but there's no time to even get a shot off I did not have a timeout left. I don't believe even if I did I 
no chance I would have been able to get a shot off at that point. So, oh, what a way to lose. And anyway, we have a post-game interview with Andrew Bynum. Well, Andrew, a great performance tonight. Were you feeling more and more comfortable as this game wore on? Uh, yeah, I felt pretty good in the second half. Um, I thought I did a decent job defensively, you know, but I posted up deep, got the ball, went to work with it. Decent is an understatement, Andrew. Thanks for the time, guys. Oh my gosh, I still can't get over the fact that Anthony Bennett beat us at the buzzer. Wow, what a sad way to lose it. And I told you guys, keep him under 100. We could not do such a thing. So, 101 99 is the final score. We come from all the way back 18 down to tie up the game at 99 just to have our hearts ripped out from our, us or whatever. Whatever the saying is. I don't even care at this point. But Danny Granger is a player of the game. He ends up dropping 27 points, 8 boards. He gets 4 steals. Our, our turnovers were a huge problem today. And that's what got us down that huge deficit was I think partially it was just turnovers we had 15 turnovers that's way too high and look at this fourth quarter though we dominated them in the fourth quarter outscoring them by 16 points winning every one of those categories that was incredible take a look at these turnovers Parker had two Bledsoe at four that's already too many as it is Bledsoe other than that had a decent game he had 15 and seven Parker had another 32 points and nine boards that's Nothing new out of him. He's been doing that all game. And look at Jamal. Was that Jamal Franklin? Or it looks like, I, I don't know, someone on the bench had four more turnovers. This is a bad game for controlling the ball. Deion Waiters ends up with, like, what, five steals? I, I mean, it's just bad game from our from our offense in terms of t keeping taking care of the ball. Excuse me. But nonetheless, that's going to do it for me. I want to thank you guys for watching. I've been enjoying this. Matt Bledsoe with Thanks. the ball, giving this one to Kelly Olenek for the mid-range. And this game was kind of a test game for Kelly Olenek. He's going to get a lot of big minutes because this guy right here, Vitor Favarani,